What's for breakfast? What's for lunch? What's for dinner? What's for snack? Wherever you are in the world, whatever time zone you're in, before anything else, soul food first, now in season five. This is Pastor Din Padayag. Welcome to Soul Food First. Yesterday, we started answering the question, Where are we going when we die? We learned that the scriptures present three eternal places or dwellings that people will go to uh, as their hope. Heaven, that is the hope as believers or for the believers in this present dispensation of grace. And then we have earth, the hope of the kingdom believers. And also we have under the earth, that is the lake of fire, the place of no hope, just eternal suffering. We learn that to go to these places, we must exercise our choice or decision. We talk about the earthly hope, the hope of the kingdom saints, including Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, David, uh, Job, John the Baptist, Peter, and the 11 apostles, and many more. They are going to that earthly kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's their hope. We learn that Christ said in John chapter 3 verse 13 that no one has ascended to heaven except him who came from heaven. And even after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and his ascension, the kingdom saints remained in their place of the dead. They did not go to heaven as indicated to us in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 34. We learn that right now the kingdom saints are in the place of the dead that is called Hades. They are in the compartment called Abraham's bosom waiting for the establishment of Christ's kingdom on this earth. These believers will rise again. Again, these kingdom saints, the kingdom believers, will rise again during the first resurrection and they will enter into the kingdom of Christ on earth. As we continue with this series, let's talk about the heavenly hope. This is our hope as believers in Christ in this present dispensation of grace. It is important to take note that we have a different hope than the kingdom believers. You see, the nation of Israel rejected God, you know, God the Father in the Old Testament. They rejected God the Son in the Gospel record and they rejected God the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts all during the dispensation of the law. And as a result, God concluded them, all of them, all in unbelief, according to Romans chapter 11, verse 32. And then he started dealing with all people without difference. And this is now the dispensation of the grace of God. With the ushering of the new dispensation, God also introduced to us a new apostle by the name of Apostle Paul. Christ has given him the revelation and the truth for this present dispensation of grace, this new program of the mystery. And one of the new revelations that Christ has given to the Apostle Paul is pertaining to the new hope of the present group of believers whom Christ called the body of Christ. That's the name of the believers in this present dispensation of grace. While the kingdom saints have earthly hope, we find that the hope of the believers of today, the believers of the body of Christ, 
we have heavenly hope. Now, first, the Apostle Paul tells us that those who are in Christ have a heavenly position. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 down to verse 6, the Bible says, But God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together, where? In heavenly places in Christ. I hope that is very clear to you that we have a heavenly position. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. And as believers in Christ, we have been joined together with Christ. And, you know, even though we are still here on earth physically, we are already positioned, we are already seated with Christ in heavenly places. That's what the scripture says. It is just a matter of time. Again, it is just a matter of time before we are going to heaven and experience, you know, being seated with Christ physically. Second, God revealed through our Apostle Paul that we are citizens of heaven. This is very clear in the book of Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. The Bible says, For our conversation, now the word conversation means citizenship, is in heaven, for whence also we look for our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So here it is very clear that we are not citizens of this earth, but rather we are citizens of heaven. That's our place of eternal uh, citizenship, eternal destiny. We are citizens of heaven. And because of this, the Bible says that we are ambassadors for Christ in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. And as ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ, we represent heaven. We represent Christ. It means that we have a message to preach and a ministry to do. Third, while our place in heaven is guaranteed, it is still positional. Someday, it will become experiential and literal for all of us believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. We will be in heaven physically and personally and experience what it is like to be seated with Christ in heavenly places. How do we get to heaven? Well, the Apostle Paul explains uh, how to get there in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 down to verse 17. He says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive shall uh, remain, or our remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Here, the word caught up is equivalent to the word rapture. So we will go to heaven, the Lord will uh, catch us up, and the Lord will rapture us. That's the way to get to heaven. It's not by plane. It's not by jumping up and down. But it is through the rapture. Through being caught up by the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's how we get to heaven. The Apostle Paul calls this our blessed hope in the book of Titus chapter 2 verse 13. He says, Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, rapture is the taking up of today's believers to heaven. Why? Because we have a heavenly hope. Again, we have a heavenly hope. 
In Colossians chapter 1 verses 4 down to verse 5, the Bible says, Since we heard of your faith in Christ uh, Jesus and of your love for all the saints, because of the hope which is laid up for you, where? In heaven. So Paul here is talking about our hope that is laid up for us in heaven. And he says, of which you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. Again, the hope of the Colossian believers is in heaven. The hope of the believers in the body of Christ in general is in heaven. And in this present time of grace, in this present time, uh, time, if you are a believer, heaven is also your hope. It is your place of citizenship and a place that you are going someday. When rapture comes, our faith will become sight, will become a reality. Fourth, Christ also revealed to the Apostle Paul that our main blessings are spiritual in, again, heavenly places. It is very clear in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. The Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. And because we are heavenly blessed and because we are heaven bound, in Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 down to verse 4, the Bible teaches us to set our minds on things above. Colossians 1 verses 1 down to verse 4, here the Bible says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, and then the Bible says, Set your affection on things above, not on the things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. And because, again, we are heavenly people with heavenly blessings, heavenly position, heavenly hope, when we die, the Bible says we are going straight to heaven. The Apostle Paul puts it this way in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8. He says, We are confident, yes, well pleased rather to be absent from the body that is in death. Paul is saying that when we are absent from the body, when we are going to die, he says that to be present with the Lord. So when we die, we are present with the Lord. In this dispensation of grace, when a believer dies, he goes straight to the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. So, our loved ones who went ahead of us in death are now rejoicing in the presence of our Savior in heavenly places. So, as believers in Christ, we are going uh, to heaven. And again, that is our hope. That is our place of residence. That is our place of eternal citizenship. Now, let's talk about the place of no hope. Again, the hope of the kingdom saints is the earthly hope, the earthly kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the hope of the grace believers is the heavenly hope. Now, who are the ones going to the place of no hope, the lake of fire? Well, the answer is the unbelievers, the ones who intentionally rejected the Lord Jesus Christ and the offer of salvation. They are the ones that will spend eternity in the lake of fire, in the place of eternal suffering and judgment. Let us explain further. The lake of fire is the final destiny of the unbelievers. It is still in the future and throughout the ages, even until this very day, when a believer or when the unbeliever dies, 
Again, when the unbeliever dies, he goes to Sheol. He goes uh, to uh, that place of the dead. Sheol is the Hebrew term for Hades, a general reference to the place of the dead. It is also called hell in the scriptures. Now, Sheol, Hades, hell is exactly the same and it is divided into two compartments. The place of comfort, we talked about that yesterday where Lazarus and other dead kingdom believers are waiting for the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ as we learned yesterday. And the other compartment is the place of torment. Now we are going to talk about the place of torment uh, right now. This is the place where the unbelieving rich man went at death. And this is the place that the unbelievers of today are going when they die. Now let's go to the book of Luke chapter 16, verses 22 down to verse 24. Here the Bible says, So it was that the beggar died, that's Lazarus, and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom the place of comfort. Now the rich man also died and was buried. And being in torment in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in uh, water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame so uh, the rich man who was an unbeliever when he died he went to the place of torment in Hades and there he was tormented already he was suffering so uh, what do we know so far well we learned that the unbelievers at death go to the place of torment in Sheol or Hades or hell. They are already tormented there and they are suffering there as the Bible says. Now, in the gospel record, Jesus Christ described Sheol, Hades or hell in a terrible way. It is compared to the valley of uh, Hinnom, an unpleasant valley outside Jerusalem that serve as the city dumping area. And there, the trash, the dead animals, and all, all kinds of junks, you know, they are being thrown in that valley, in that place. And Matthew chapter 9 verse 44 tells us that the worms there do not die and the fire is not quenched. It means that the fire keeps burning and burning and burning, never stops. It is a terrible place to go. But there is more. In Revelation chapter 20 verses 14 down to verse 15, here the Bible tells us that after the great white throne judgment, listen to this, the unbelievers will be thrown into the lake of fire. In Revelation chapter 20 verses 14 down to verse 15, the Bible says that death and Hades, that is Sheol or hell, were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So it is very clear that that's the eternal judgment, eternal punishment of the unbelievers. You know, right now they are in hell, they are in Hades, they are in Sheol. But one day when the final judgment comes, they will be thrown eventually into the lake of fire for their final uh, judgment. And that's their final destiny. Now, who else? is going to the lake of fire. Matthew chapter 25 verse 41 tells us, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire, 
prepared for the devil and his angels. So aside from the unbelievers, the devil and his angels are also going to that place. So aside from, again, the unbelievers, uh, the devil, Satan, and his angels will be there also. And this will be fulfilled in the book of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 10. The Bible says the devil, that's Satan, who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast, that's the Antichrist, and the false prophets are. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now, how long? How long will they be there? How long the unbelievers will be there in the lake of fire? How long Satan and his angels? How long the false prophets? How long is the Antichrist? All of them, how long will they be in the lake of fire? Well, both the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 41, and the book of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 10, here we find that the uh, are saying forever and ever and also for eternity or everlasting now that is very sad and so uh, make sure that you are not going to this place of suffering the eternal lake of fire you must make a decision to be saved to believe in the lord jesus christ and what he did for your sins the Bible says that the good news is Christ died for your sins and that he was buried and that he rose again and the blood that he shed on the cross that can wash your sins away. And the moment you, you put your faith and you believe in that truth, in that gospel, the Bible says you are saved and because you are saved, you are no longer going to the lake of fire, but you are going to heaven because you are now saved. Beloved, tune in tomorrow as we answer the question, do babies and young children go to heaven when they die? Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy your soul food. You are watching Soul Food First on Grace TV. Please follow us on the Grace TV Facebook page. And please subscribe to our Grace TV YouTube channel. Until next time, God bless you. Bye!